the another the very very uh, recent and the latest emerging service is Amazon Redshift. This Amazon Redshift is fully managed and petabyte scale data warehouse and service that makes it simple, simple and cost effective to efficiently analyze all your data using existing business intelligence tools. That means that I hope you already have an evaluation with ETL tools like Teradata. Teradata is so popular in all the in all the financial domain. The banking and financial domain is very very used by the Teradata. Not only financial domain, some of the telecom domain and clients also migrated from their existing Oracle to the uh, Teradata and they are using it. So how Teradata is having popularity? So be, um, the same, the competitor for the Teradata I can say here, this is Amazon Redshift. This is a columnar database. This is a columnar database. I want to um, give you a clarity here. A columnar database. Till now you, you didn't get a chance to listen about what is a columnar database. You listen about a database called Oracle database or SQL database or Teradata database or IBM DB2 database and so forth. But you didn't get a chance to listen about a mm, columnar database. What is the difference between a columnar database and a row-level database is just you observe it while you are creating a fact and dimension tables. You are creating a fact and dimension tables as part of your database model. As part of your existing databases in Oracle, take an example here Oracle database. If you are creating a fact and dimension table, so what are the dimensions means, what are the possibilities are going to take. So this is how it is going to be fact and dimensions. What makes the difference between a row level database and a columnar database? The major difference it is in your Oracle database, let us suppose a database name called sample, a database name called sample, under sample database you created one table. The table name is EMP table only. Assume that uh, already everybody is talking about EMP table. You created an EMP table. So EMP table, every row contains every row contains 30 columns. Every row contains 30 columns. This is the structure of the uh, employee table. So if this employee table, if you are querying the data, like select a star from age greater than 30 and salary greater than 40k. Only two parameters. Select a star from EMP where salary is greater than 40k and age is greater than 30. Only two parameters and two columns are involved in your query. What happens at internally while you are querying the data? Where is your Oracle database is there? That system in the local memory all your all your employee table of the all the users the 30 columns of information is come taking into the heap memory taking into heap memory i would call it as local memory ram our total the 30 columns information it is taking into local memory your query is applied on only two columns one is your salary another one is your age so only two columns are doing aggregations based upon these two, it will validate and it will shortlist and it will show you the result in your command prompt, in your SQL prompt there itself. But coming back to your columnar database, this is how your Oracle database is exactly functioning. How many number of columns are there? All the columns with respect to the row, it is taking into the system heap memory irrespective to that. Whether your query is on single column, are on two columns, are on three columns. It does not mm, bother the board how many columns are participating in your query. Irrespective to that, all the columns are taken into heap memory. Then it will look into your query how many number of columns how many participating in your query. Those will take into consideration to be executed. But if it is the concept of latest and the NoSQL databases or columnar databases, we can call it as in this databases, the same example, EM employee table, the same each and every row contains 30 columns, but here you are having the same query, where select a star from employee table, 
where salary is greater than 40k and age is greater than 30. So the same query you are applying on the columnar database. What happens is many columns are how many columns are participating in the query? Only two columns are participating with respect to the user. So only two columns are taking into the heap memory, that is system memory with respect to the row. With respect to the row, only the two columns out of 30 columns, taking only two columns into the heap memory, it will do the it will do the performance and aggregations or validations. What are the whatever the logic you written in the query, the logic will perform and will show you the result in the um, SQL prompt. So this is the difference between your columnar database and the role and the existing row level databases. The difference between is once again I'm explaining the columnar database. In columnar database, it will look for the query how many columns are participating in your query. Out of 30 columns in your table, each and every record contains 30 columns. Out of 30 columns, only the participation of the uh, participation of the columns is three in your query. So only three columns are coming into the heap memory. That's why the performance is very very high compared to our row level databases. This is a major functionality difference while we are querying the data. The system heap memory is going to be bottleneck there. Here there is no bottleneck at all. Why? Because only the two to three columns. If it is a very very high complex query, then I'm I'm going to use the total 30 columns in the scenario. Then it might be a performance challenge there. But instead of that, the remaining all the cases, very high and medium and the low level queries, very easily we can compatible and executed. And moreover, if you are name it as a columnar database, name it as a columnar database, the processing is parallel processing. Then processing is parallel processing. If it is a parallel processing, then your query will execute not on same machine. Your query will execute on two to three machines, two to three machines parallelly. That means a divide conquer met met methodology. Divide conquer methodology. How a ten persons can do a, a can do a task in ten days, then one person one person will do the same task in in three months. So how you are going to divide the task to the to the ten persons? That is divide conquer methodology. The same way here you are going to divide. Here you are going to divide the same the same kind of scenario your major problem is going to be divided into three parts or four parts and it will execute parallelly that's how the parallelism is coming to the picture Nanda Kumar has raised the question here if two columns are being displayed in the displayed in the results but the query might be based on other column values how many column values are participated how many column values are participated? Only those columns are taken into the heap memory. Remaining columns are not taken into the system heap memory at the query execution phase. At the query execution phase. Here, in our Oracle database, whenever you're hitting the query directly, there is a query execution phase. But here, in our columnar databases, there is a beauty call. While you are querying the data, there is a query planner. It's prepared at your master node and query execution at your slave nodes. It is a master slave architecture. It's a master slave architecture. Your query planner will be prepared at your master node and the query execution at your slave nodes. That means in two to three nodes will participate to execute your query to achieve the parallelism, to achieve the parallelism. Irrespective to the in Teradata, the license is available for one license. The Teradata license is available only for the 500 TB of the data, not more than that. If your data size is increases more than 500 TB, you have to buy one more license. You have to buy one more license if you want to use it. This is how the car, the Teradata is coming to the picture. But our Amazon Redshift, our Amazon Redshift is going to give you petabyte, not even terabytes, even petabyte scale data also you can query very easily with the very spontaneous actions you will take care about it. So this is the brief, brief information about the columnar database. Why I discuss the columnar database? Because this Amazon Redshift is a data warehouse. It's a data warehouse. 
and in the cloud you talk about everything is a service based model so here the data where until now we saw about s3 as a service and software as a service and platform as a service and so forth now we are going to see your data warehouse as a service so now you are going to see the screen what it is trying to say Amazon Redshift is a fast and fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse data warehouse service that makes it simple and cost effective to efficiently analyze all your data using your existing business intelligence tools what are business intelligence tools you want to use pentaho or cognos or obie or tableau any business intelligence tools you are using for ad hoc querying or applying any business intelligence applications you are using on top of your redshift on top of your redshift you can query the data with very fast and very scalable there is no other data warehouse is available in our existing market which is providing this much um, velocity of the querying the data um, previously before invention of the amazon redshift there is a green plum database there is a green plum database it is also a same type of master slave architecture but it is not scalable at that level due to some limitations it was ground up and now the popular database were calling it as amazon redshift and uh, now you can see in the diagram and uh, the first one it is trying to say easy to use by automating most of the common administrative tasks and next one it is delivers fast query io input output performance for virtually any size data sets here there is no constraint about what is the volume of the data the data set may be any size maybe the size of kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes or terabytes with res irrespective to any volume of the data your query is very fast that's what it is trying to say here and it has no upfront cost and you can pay as you go the same you already aware of the same um, pay as you go model the same um, applicable here as well in this data warehouse as a service model for the amazon redshift and it's a powerful security functionality is embedded so you need not to be worried about whether it is launching in private cloud or so forth and all so it is already taking care about your functionality why because you are talking about data warehouse every asset every company every organization in, a, in each and every domain the company is feeding it as the data is asset to them asset to the organization if they are feeding the data the customer data is asset to them obviously you are talking about a data warehouse all the data with respect to each and every vertical each and every domain of the data you are storing in your data warehouse it's not a database it's a data warehouse if you are talking about a data warehouse then definitely those people are talking about very high secure manner it's already in build so any uh, any another is uses any malicious uses it's not at all be possible for the data amazon redshift and it is optimized for large data sets nowadays each and every challenges they are facing with the volume of the data the volume of the data is increased rapidly from the last 2 to 3 consecutive years in each and every domain i'm not going to specify in one domain it is going to be high in one domain it is going to be low so in the case in each and every domain the volume of the data has been increased rapidly from the last 3 consecutive years so let us take an example here the teradata already the customer who adopted from their oracle or sql databases to teradata warehouse there there is a constant it is for the one license it is available for 500 500 terabyte of the data if the data is exceeds for the 500 terabyte then there is no option to survive in the terabyte data he has he has to buy one more license from the terabyte data it's very expensive there so that's why they are moving into the challenges where the um, where the performance is scalable and where the volume is scalable and where the security is very high so the client is in the client all the clients are interested to see this kind of environment so this is a little information about amazon redshift and now we can see some more information this is also a cluster now i want to give you a cluster what do you mean by cluster a cluster is nothing but a group of machines a group of machines here the architecture of amazon redshift it is it is a master slave architecture that means only one master node is available one master instance is available the slave instances is up to us how many instances we want to launch those many we can those many instances we can create it and 
and he is uh, av av is is a question who is a competitor for amazon redshift as of now there is no competitor for amazon redshift previously the competitor is a green plum database and it, and the terra data previously in our existing platform but now there is no competitor for amazon redshift this much of scalability and it is offering a data warehouse service model it was a recent product from amazon it was not there in the year of 2008 or 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 or even only the few months in the 2013 it was launched and stable you know amazon redshift and coming back to the cluster discussion a cluster is nothing but a group of machines amazon redshift architecture is a master slave architecture a master node is available and slave nodes are available whenever you are hitting the query the query planner the query planner will be prepared at your master node and the query execution is executed at your query execution at your query execution is provides at your uh, slave nodes now again av av is raised a question then who provides the similar services like redshift it's like redshift you can simply talk it about in the physical database green plum I'm talking about there is no other competitor is there in terms of the cloud. In terms of the cloud, in terms of the cloud for Amazon, no any other service for offering this kind of services. In the physical infrastructure, Greenplum is offering this type of service, but uh, but some limitations are there. When we are talking about yearly comparison between Redshift and uh, Greenplum DB, Greenplum DB, there is some limitations are there for the Greenplum DB. So based upon the requirement, we can suggest any one of these two already if the infrastructure is available 50 percent 60 percent already moved migrated from their physical to the virtual infrastructure that is in the cloud so they are going to use this it is yes green plum DB green plum or not green plum DB AV the competitive green plum database DB yeah the cluster so how we are going to create a cluster and how we are going to uh, use this and all we can see practically this is how the cluster we are going to create it and how we are going to create the redshift database and what are the parameters we have to pass I will show you practically complete this thing and authorize the inbound traffic access after you launch your cluster you have explicitly grant your client and inbound access to your cluster why because it is very high secure environment this is data warehouse you can create multiple databases for your financial data, for your consumer data, for your retail data, for your sales data, for your marketing data. So be irrespective to how many modules are there in your organization, those many databases you can create it. The data in session is also the same way. That's how it is going to acting as a data warehouse as a service. And your client can run on Amazon EC2 instances or any internet connected device and authorized access from cluster VPC is provisioned in a VPC network and this is how VPC ID will be there, VPC security group will be there open the Amazon VPC console by clicking the VPC security groups in the VPC console link as shown in the preceding Amazon Redshift console so how it is and the navigating pane the security groups you can create it how we are going to authenticate it and all and how we are going to connect it to a cluster how we are going to connect it to a cluster I hope you are having an idea about uh, idea about SQL workbench in SQL workbench you are, we are using to connect to the Redshift database a Redshift database and we are going to create how your SQL prompt will be there the same SQL you are creating the query here and we are running the query here here what are the things has been taken care of while you are creating the connection 